I want to thank all of those that are watching us online. We're live here at Mount Zion Oakwood Village. Make sure you take a seat, get your Bible open, and let's go into Bible study. Today's topic that we're going to talk about today is how to overcome unfairness and injustice. Unfairness and injustice. Anybody ever been through some injustice, just say amen. All of us, at some point in our lives, have been through some unfair and some unjust situations. You know, each day we live, we see further stories of injustice in our lives. You know, at times we feel like we're bombarded with like gut-wrenching examples. It defies normality, it defies common sense, it defies uh, sanity. And if these examples in our society seem to overwhelm you or they seem to discourage you, I want to tell you this, you are not alone. You can look at your neighbor all around you. They've all experienced at some point in their life unfairness and injustice. However, what I want you to learn today is that in the midst of unfairness and injustice, God has a way of bringing hope to your life. But he also urges us to press forward in spite of the injustice. So our example today is going to come from the book of Genesis. Somebody say Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 is one of the texts we're going to talk about, and Genesis also 37. Well, you'll read the biblical story of Joseph, the biblical story of Joseph. And Joseph in his life, he dealt with a lot of injustice and unfairness in our life. I can just give you a rundown of what Joseph went through. It wasn't fair that Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. It wasn't fair that they took Joseph's coat, his father gave him dipped it in blood, and made his father Jacob believe that he was dead. It wasn't fair in Jacob's life that Potiphar's wife, basically the Pharaoh's wife, falsely accused him of immorality. It wasn't fair that Jacob had to spend 13 years, I believe biblical scholars say, 13 years in prison for crimes that he did not commit. So do you think that this made Joseph feel overwhelmed and discouraged? Of course it did. It made Joseph realize that life was unfair. But here's what injustice didn't do to Joseph. It didn't shake his faith in God. And I want to tell you today, you've got to keep your faith no matter the situation. So I just gave a quick rundown of the injustices that Joseph had to endure. And so the Bible teaches that Joseph, in the midst of all these moments, what did he do? He kept his eye focused on God. He kept his eyes focused on God. Now, Joseph is mentioned in Genesis, but we can hop all the way to Hebrews 11 in the New Testament, where it is said that biblical heroes, just like Joseph, they battled unfairness by faith. They chose to act faithfully despite the circumstances in their lives. In fact, the phrase by faith, somebody say by faith, it's repeated 21 times by the author of Hebrews, which basically shows us that God was trying to tell us something. First, the question is asked, what is faith? So Hebrews 11 verse 1 basically helps describe what it is. It says this. Let's read Hebrews 11 verse 1. It's on the screen. It says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So what does that mean in Joseph's context? I told you all the injustices that Joseph had to go through. It meant Joseph lived his life conf confidently knowing that God would never leave him nor forsake him. See, Joseph left, led his life because he knew that God intended all he went through for a plan that would turn out for his good. See, I don't know who hears me today, but God can turn it out for your good. God can change it for your good. And see, later in the book of Genesis, what you'll learn, again, if you read that on your own this week, is you'll learn that through Joseph's journey that he went from the pit to the palace. He went from the pit to the palace. And what he would accomplish would be called, as the Bible says in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, he would accomplish the saving of many lives from a severe famine. He would accomplish the saving of many lives. And so ultimately, what did God do? He made Joseph second in command to Pharaoh. 
He enabled him to, to save an entire nation. He, he enabled him to save his people. He enabled him to save his entire family from whom Jesus would descend. Jesus would come out of the family of Joseph and it was all because of one, one of the things that happened in this line of descendants. It was because Joseph kept his eyes stayed on God. He kept his eye on the prize. Now, I went through this story pretty fast, but the short version is this. Joseph went again from lying in a pit. He was beat up. He was sold into slavery, into becoming a high-ranking government official. Now, it didn't happen right away, but it happened in due time. It happened in God's time. And so life shows us that injustice and unfairness is not always a destination. It can be a journey to something bigger and greater than the oppressor ever thought that they had over you. It can be a journey to something that they meant for evil, but God meant it for their good. Can somebody say amen to that? See, the enemy meant evil in Joseph's life, but God turned it out for good. And see, that's what God can do in your life. That's the inspiration and motivation that I want to give you today. He can turn your injustices into triumphs in your life. So that's why the Bible teaches not to grow weary in well-doing. Because in due time, you will reap a harvest. If you don't want, give up. Somebody say, don't give up. So let's get practical. How can you press forward in the face of adversity? in the face of injustice. You just said it. Here's the number one point. Never give up. Somebody say, never give up. So how many was alive in the 60s? That was everybody except for me. There's a few of us that weren't. So Ralph J. Bunch, anybody remember Ralph J. Bunch? He's a civil rights activist in the 1960s. He said this. He said, to make his way, you must have a firm resolve you must have persistence. You must have tenacity. He said, one must gear himself or herself to hard work, not part of the way, but all the way. And he said this, he said, he or she can never let up. He can never, she can never let up. Now, while Joseph never met Dr. Bunch, there's a good chance that he would have agreed and identified with this statement. See, Joseph had a choice. He had a choice to make in the middle of his injustice. But Joseph made the choice to press on, even through disappointment. Think about your own life. Has anybody ever walked through a season where you felt like you were disappointed? Anybody ever walked through a season where you seemed like you couldn't catch a break? Anybody ever went through a season where you said, you know what, this cannot be my reality? Anybody ever went through a season where maybe you lost someone you loved or you lost a job or you were sick or maybe you were mistreated? I, I don't know. Whatever it is, life can throw some unfair punches in your face. But here's what I want you to remember. At the end of the day, you got to be like Joseph and never give up. And see, he was encouraged that the Lord will always see his children through. The Lord will always see you through. Turn to the Bible in John 16, 33. If you got a Bible with you, turn to John 16, 33. In the New Testament, John 16, 33, Jesus was talking. He said in this text, he said, you will have suffering in this world. But he said this, somebody repeat that to me. Say, be courageous. I have conquered the world. See, the good news in your situation is that Jesus said you're going to have some suffering. You're going to see some injustices. But be courageous because I have conquered the world. So you don't have to give up. You know, as Christians... We are not called to fight evil for evil. When justice hits God's people, we've got to think on a higher level. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. If somebody slaps me in the face, they might be getting up off the ground. 
But at the end of the day, we have to learn how to respond. Again, Joseph, he was in prison. He was in prison for something he did not do. He was falsely accused. But somehow, you will read in this text that he remained. He was content. See, it was Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle would later write in his letters to the church in Philippians 4.11, which is another text that we can put up. Paul, Philippians 4.11. It says, I learned to be content in whatever circumstance I find myself in. Think about this. What Paul learned was how to preserve was how to basically, here's another word, was how to persevere. See, that's what Joseph did in his story, in his situation of unfairness and injustice. Joseph persevered. So here's some texts on perseverance that you've got to keep in your back pocket when dealing with injustice. Psalms 34 and 19 is on the screen. Romans 5, 3 through 5 is on the screen. James chapter 1, 2 through 4, those are texts that you've got to learn. You've got to consider Joseph's life in your own within these following passages. I'm just going to read them to you. Psalms 34, 19 says, One who is righteous has many adversities, but the Lord rescues them out of them all. Here's some inspiration. Here's another one, Romans 5, 3 through 5. We also boast in our afflictions because we know that afflictions do what? They produce endurance. Endurance produces proven character. Proven character produces hope. And this hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given to us. Here's another one, James chapter 1, 2 through 4. Here's some text that you got to keep in your spirit when you're dealing with injustice. Consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith, sometimes what you go through is only a test. It's a testing of your faith. How many know people will test your faith all the time? The testing of your faith produces what? Somebody say endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The Bible says lacking nothing. See, through these passages, though they were written long after Joseph's death, I believe Joseph modeled these truths. He was repeatedly wrong. He was enslaved. He was imprisoned. But he chose to make the most of his circumstances by rising up in the midst of what he was going through. Now, now, the truth is, circumstances, yes, they can get you down. But remember, just as the Lord fought for Joseph, here's the good news. He'll still fight for you. He'll fight for you. Is there anybody in this place where God fought for you in the midst of what you went through? He fights for those who trust in him. So even when God allows disappointment, we must choose to trust him and we must choose to persevere. Somebody say persevere. So never give up, and secondly, don't be discouraged. Here's the next part. Somebody repeat after me. Say, don't be discouraged. Now, this is a hard one. It's very hard not to be discouraged when, when something's unfair. But the Bible teaches don't be discouraged. That don't make no sense. But what does the Bible say? Don't be discouraged. See, Joseph had several times. When he should have got out of prison early. He had several times where he could have got out of his situation before those 13 years. If you read in the text, on your own time, you'll see that things didn't work out the way that they should have at times. But the truth of the matter is what Joseph was dealing with is he was dealing with human beings. How many know that human beings can be fickle? Don't look at your neighbor. Don't blame them. But human beings can be a trip. And see, we know this as a fact of life, that people will disappoint us. Friends will disappoint us. Family will disappoint us. Governments will disappoint us. People in control, people you encounter in life will disappoint you. There are going to be some times where you're going to feel overlooked, dismissed, and it's going to feel like you're forgotten. But here's the good news that you can hang your hat on. And you can whisper this in somebody's ear when they're going through some disappointment, when they're going through this. I want you to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I want you to let them know 
God never forgets about you. If I can give you some inspiration today, people will overlook you. People will do some things in your life, but God never forgets about you. And I know that delays in your life, delays in things that you see will bring disappointment, will bring discouragement, but the truth of the matter is, God does not forget his people. If God woke you up this morning, he didn't forget about you. If you made it here safely without getting in a car accident, somebody ought to say hallelujah. God has been good. And see, Joseph, he had a 13-year extended stay in his area. He had a real big wilderness moment. But attitude, I believe, helped his outcome. His attitude about what he was going through. So all we know of Joseph basically points to a character of endurance and waiting on God to act. See, sometimes what we got to do is we got to wait on the Lord. Do I have any impatient people in the house? You can raise your hand right along with me. I don't want to wait on nothing. But sometimes I got to do what? I got to wait on the Lord. And I believe patience is a great quality to have. And it doesn't just come from osmosis. You got to pray your way to patience. You got to have what I want to call courageous prayer. Courageous prayer. We're going to put that on the screen. Courageous prayer is needed in your life. Now, as an answer to your prayer, know this. The Lord might make us wait. He might make us wait. Though we want our deliverance right now, you might have to wait. But here's the good news. In the process of your waiting, we learn to walk through seasons of difficulty with a, with, with a sense of calm in knowing that God is in control. And with a sense of calm in knowing, as I believe Joseph knew, that God will, in due time, deliver us. And sometimes we're going to have to wait on the Lord in these seasons of unfairness and disappointment. But we have to remember that his ways are higher than our ways. You got to remember that his thoughts are higher than his thoughts. But I want to tell you, somebody's got to remember that we serve an on-time God. We serve a God that's on time. And I'm going to tell you, when we say on time, we mean his time. Not my time, not your time, but his time. Not our time, but his time. The Bible says in Psalms 27, 14, and we can put that on the screen. It says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart be courageous. Isaiah 40, 40 31, and I'm just going to talk about it in the New Living Version, says, but they who wait upon the Lord will get new strength. See, while you're waiting, know that God is working. He's going to work some strength into your life. He says they will rise up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weak. How many of you are glad to know that God will help you to keep on walking? He's going to help you to keep on moving. No matter what you see on the news, no matter what you go through, we can go into God's house and be encouraged that we can still soar like eagles. God can take care of us in the midst of a barren land. And so the Bible also talks about how you will run and not get tired. I want to use the words of Langston Hughes. I believe Langston Hughes paralleled Joseph's path to endurance through his unfairness. Langston Hughes declared in his poem called Dreams. He said this, and I'm going to put it on the screen. He said, hold fast to dreams. For if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. He said, hold fast to dreams. For when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. So what did Joseph have to do to make it through this injustice? Joseph had to continue being patient and trust that God was with him. See, you got to keep your eyes looking up even when life brings you down. You got to look toward the hills for what's come with your help and know where your help is going to come from. Is there anybody in this place that believes that your help is going to come from the Lord? 
Did you know this? I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, and I want you to read it. Joseph's brothers plotted to kill them, kill him, and they changed their minds. See, God can change the minds of your enemy. Did you know that Joseph, when he was taken into slavery, when he was accused of the crime that he was accused of, what was the usual penalty? The usual penalty was death. And what happened? Potiphar only jailed him. See what that tells us. That through the injustice that Joseph went through, the worst did not happen because the Lord was with him. If you got a text that I want you to keep in your spirit, you got to remember the Lord is with you. Genesis 39, 19 through 21, write that down. Genesis 39, 19 through 21. When you're going through something, I want you to read that text. Genesis 39, 19 through 21. The Lord was with him. He had a future far greater than his present. That's what we can hang our hat on. Is he had a future far greater than his present. God had bigger plans that was better than his unfortunate start. And lastly, before we go, remember, don't give up. Say, don't give up. Say, don't be discouraged. And lastly, before we go, I want to leave you with this text. Psalms 34, verse 19. I'm going to read the NIV text of this. 34, 19. It's on the screen. It says this. It says, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from, their all, from them all. I want to ask you the question. Has God ever delivered you out from something? Can you look back over your life and say, God delivered me? Is there anybody in this place that can maybe give God a few seconds of praise today and say, God delivered me from something in my life? So even though you're righteous, you, you've been reading the Bible, you've been praying, you've been talking to God, you come to church, and you've been going through it, I want to tell you, God is going to deliver you. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And in due time, God will bring you out. So don't give up. Don't be discouraged. And just like God delivered Joseph, I want to tell you today, God will deliver you. If you believe it today, give God some praise in this place. Amen. Thank you to all of those watching. We'll see you on next week. Amen, amen. So before we go, I want to show you the story of Joseph. So we're going to watch a quick movie. It's only about 10 minutes. It won't